Thanks to KiwiCo for sponsoring this video. Mm, get him! Get him! Oh, hey! I'm not gonna actually throw that. Are you okay, Nintendo? Right there? Is that good? Good? All right. I was super addicted to video games my entire childhood, and here's what happened. It shaped who I am, and I like who I am. I think video games can be part of a healthy lifestyle. True, as I got older, I stopped playing them so much because this feeling developed when I played them. I don't know where it came from. And that feeling is cannibal at, no, guilt. I know it's stupid to feel guilty to enjoy something that you love as long as you're not harming yourself or someone else. Unless they wanna be harmed. The feeling of guilt never happened when I was a kid when I played way more, why now? I'm making this video to figure that out and to hopefully figure out how I can have a more healthy relationship with a thing I love, cannibalism, video games. <laughs> Are we the baddies? I love the power glove. It's so bad. If you do a Google, you'll find lots of studies that show that video games are good or bad. I'm not gonna go through all of them. I got some video games to play later. But after reading a lot of the videos are the baddies arguments, I think it all boils down to this. Ways video games might be bad for you. You could be doing other things instead. With your money, with your time, with your relationships, with thoughts, energy, and your body. And that's pretty much it. There's a debate about whether video games will cause certain undesirable traits, depression, aggression, obsession by Calvin Klein. I'm just meshing. But that's the whole correlation versus causation debate. Is it video games that lead to this trait or is it the trait that leads to the video game? Chicken or the egg? Is a hot dog a sandwich? That one doesn't apply, but it's interesting. But to go back to doing other things instead. It's a waste of money, it's a waste of time. You could be building a career, you could be exercising. Yeah, video games might be bad if you don't moderate, which is true about anything. What you can do, you can overdo. Everything in moderation. I believe it was Nietzsche who said, maybe set a maximum two or three days at a time in Stardew Valley, unless you've got a lot of iridium sprinklers and you don't have to water everything all the time. Then maybe add a day or two. By the way, do you have a starred void salmon yet? I can't find them, but I'm trying to do it without Googling it. So I guess don't tell me, don't tell me. I'll find it. I'm Frederick Nietzsche. Also saying you could have done something better with your time denies the actual possible benefit benefits of video games, which I'll talk about later. Also, if you do anything, read a book, learn some crap, build something, draw something, listen to music, you will always could have done something else instead. Fwibmo, forever will be missing out. One thing though, video games are uniquely immersive. I'm more likely to lose track of time playing video games than doing other things, except for maybe sleeping. You guys should have seen the dream I recently had. The graphics were so good. The writing was a bit artsy and the control didn't make a lot of sense when I tried to run, but it was still mostly good. I'll stream it next time. Now then, it is time to regale you with my lifetime video game journey to establish cred, which is short for incredibly addicted to video games in my past. I remember the first home console video game I ever played. When I was a wee lad, my dad brought home this. The Atari 2600, because pre-year 2000, numbers that began with two were the future. We popped in Frogger, and I played it. A lot. So many dead frogs. And then one fateful day in 1985, a wily scientist sent me back in time in a DeLorean. No, a friend on my block down the street introduced me to this, the Nintendo Entertainment System. I keep forgetting to get the oil changed. And he solidified his status as my best friend for life. Thank you, what's his name? And then my uncle got one and my parents took me to play Super Mario and I played for nine hours, not an exaggeration. I had a blister, for real, on the back of my thumb. I don't know how it happened. I, maybe because my thumb bends weirdly. Anyway, thank you to my favorite uncle, what's his name? Needless to say, I was very quickly addicted. Well, if it was needless, why did I say it? Needless to say is needless to say. Mmm, love me some Mario, Zelda, Excitebike, Battletoads, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, not the one that I thought it was in the arcade, but just the at-home one, which wasn't as good, but I still loved it. I had a game called Conan, which was based on Conan the Barbarian, not Conan O'Brien, unfortunately. And it was terrible. And I played it for hours. But this was just the genesis of my love. It was eventually time to move on to the genesis. And then the Super Nintendo. I, I don't have that one. Wow. The amount of hours I logged playing Final Fantasy 3. Nintendo 64. PlayStation. Wow. The amount of hours I logged playing Final Fantasy 7. When was the fantasy going to be actually final? Also, I can currently play tons of games on computer. Mm, love me some Sierra King's Quest, Space Quest. Leisure Suit Larry, don't tell my mom. LucasArts filled our hearts with point-and-click adventure. And then I went to college. My video game playing began to fade. What's his name and I went our separate ways, I'll never forget you. I still played video games, occasionally, up to this very day, but not every free hour I could find. You know I actually have a gaming channel, Wheezy Gamer, that I don't really update right now. Wheezy Gamer. 
I did play Breath of the Wild in its entirety and Dark Souls in its half tirety And that's where we are. I was incredibly addicted. It shaped my childhood in lots of ways. And now, I sometimes get really into a game, but it's not a huge amount. With Guilt. This city. With Guilt. This city on Video game. Guilt. Why? I think it's because of just the nature of adulthood and a family and you could be doing other stuff instead. For instance, my wife's texting me right now. Our two-year-old just named her mountain lion Winnie and the big cat she has, Kenny. It's adorable. I love it. That's better than a video game. Never cared about stuff like that before. If you told me your daughter named their stuffed animal, I wouldn't care at all. I'd rather play video games. And yes, we text each other in the same house. It's a pandemic. We like to feel like we're out in the world, okay? Also, there's a funny thing you discover when you're an adult and you don't do things. <laughs> So spending time playing video games actually does kind of feel like wasting time. However, I also watch TV and movies and go to the bar with friends, or did before the pandemic, and that doesn't feel like wasting time. Or I spend lots of time scrolling on Twitter. Actually, that does feel a little bit like wasting time. Wait, why do I feel guilty about that too? What's the commonality with Twitter and video games and not those other things? List time! Solitary experience. When I play video games, I play by myself. My wife doesn't like to play, my daughters too. There's hope, she likes to watch me fly through the air when I play Hollow Knight, and we made a Stardew Valley account for her called Ada Potato, and I asked her what she wanted to name her cat, and she said Puffanuti. So the cat's name is Puffanuti. Point is, usually when I'm binging Twitter or playing video games, I am doing it by myself. When I was a kid, I would play video games with friends, but the problem is now my friends are adults too, and we live kind of far away from each other. Yes, you can play video games online with friends, and I do actually play Worms with my friends and bandmates every month since the pandemic started and it's actually super fun and I don't feel guilty about that. That's different than playing online with strangers and I tend to like playing games by myself. Kind of a lone hero. What does that say about me? I don't know. Probably just that I like the world to revolve around me and I'm super arrogant and I want to hoard all the glory. Which isn't surprising for someone who made himself his own boss making thousands of videos about himself online for 13 years. That's a separate topic. Anyway, another Twitter video game commonality. They're both open-ended. They lack a start-stop structure. There's no bell going off telling me when I should stop. Movies have a solid beginning beginning and end. TV shows have episodes. I can binge those sometimes too, and I do feel guilty about that, but often I don't, mostly because China wants to stop and I don't want to watch it without her. But it's more likely that I will let Twitter and video games go on for far longer and hinder my sleep. So with video games, the binge danger is larger, and as an adult, I feel like I have more stuff I have to do. But I also have more stuff that I want to do. As a kid, I mostly just wanted to play video games, but now I actually value interaction with people in person, probably because I don't have it as much. I also have a career that's very time consuming, but I also want to do it. And I spend more time exercising because of my deteriorating old man body, and I enjoy it. The exercise, not the body. Well, I kind of enjoy my body. <laughs> Never mind. As a kid, I just basically cared about movies and video games. I would sit there drinking my tab and my Yoohoo, wearing my Pizza Hut Back to the Future sunglasses, playing Virtual Boy as I floated around on my hoverboard. Those were real, right? Video games? Make it. Man. Okay, we established why video games might be bad and why they make me feel guilty, but we've also established that I binged video games hard throughout my childhood and it made me who I am and I like who I am. Except for this elbow. Hate you, elbow. Why can't you be like my other elbow? I love this elbow. <clears throat> so, how exactly did video games make me who I am? What was good about that? List time! Hand-eye coordination is an obvious one. That really helps me with video editing and driving and literally manipulating anything with my hands while looking at it. Puzzle solving. Again, video editing. In a lot of ways, making these videos is a giant puzzle. Or this one. Like, I could use this clip right now. Wait, I did that wrong. Like, I could use this clip right now. Or this one. That's better. Memorization. Which, again, is useful for these videos because I have to remember what I wrote and, and then say it to the camera. Problem solving with hardware and software. My life is all all hardware and software now, but I remember when I would buy a computer game, I would sometimes have to work for a week trying to figure out how to get the game to work on the computer, which leads to made me comfortable with failure, not just with software, but playing the actual game. Super Mario Brothers, you could not save the game. You would play and you get really far and then you die and then you do it all again and you die, you do it all again and sometimes you die before that point you made it to before and you get really frustrated. It taught me practice, trying different things, not giving up dealing with failure. When I do play video games now, the things I get out of it are it's fun, and it reduces anxiety. Back when we would take airplanes, when I played Zelda Breath of the Wild on my Switch, it was the best thing for flight anxiety. I have mild flight anxiety. It works better than anything else at taking my mind off of being on a plane. Ultimately, I think, in moderation, video games probably are and have been good for me. I shouldn't feel guilty about it, and I probably will get over it, don't worry. And 
You shouldn't feel guilty about it if it's not harming you or anyone else. You hear that, Aunt Judy? I can play video games if I want, Aunt Judy. Another thing I'd like to acknowledge that doesn't necessarily have to do with me because it didn't exist when I was a kid, but it's a legitimate career now. I probably would have pursued it as a career. If you would have told me I could play video games for a living as a kid, well, I guess that wouldn't have been good for me because I would have died of shock. But it's not just a career in an esports kind of way, but also video commentary, live streaming on Twitch, being a game reviewer, a game maker. Video games, man. I'm for them. Now I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, KiwiCo. Right now kids might be experiencing what they call summer brain drain. Maybe not successfully moderating their screen time with, yes, video games, but also online chats or virtual classes, which are good, but they're also more screen time. If only there were someone, perhaps, an organization seeking to inspire kids to see themselves as makers, engineers, and creators of their own innovative designs and outcomes. Maybe this organization would provide them with the tools to become creative problem solvers and critical thinkers. Said tools could be hands-on projects and toys designed to expose them to concepts in STEAM. No, not the watery vapor that fogs up my glasses, but that in is included because it's scientific, but I'm talking about science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Maybe they could provide these toys in a box that go right to your homes, perhaps on a monthly basis or an individual purchasing basis. And within that box would be all the supplies required. No runs to the store. Wait a second. That random thought I had is exactly what KiwiCo is. Wow! They send boxes with super fun projects in them for kids to enjoy. Eight subscription lines, each catering to different age groups and topics. We got the koala crate. What's in it? Let's open it with my, my little daughter. Ada, do you want to open a KiwiCo box? Okay! Okay! <laughs> okay, let's do that. Okay. What could be all in here? <laughs> what could be all in here? A bug. A bug? Oh, what's this? What is that? Yellow. Can you stand on a yellow circle? Okay. Okay, what about, what color is that? Purple. Can you stand on a purple circle? Okay. All right. We're doing something. Yeah, we're playing a fun <laughs> game. They have a very easy to navigate online store where you can purchase individual projects based on age and subject matter. No subscription needed. All one-offs, I like to call them. That was the first time I've ever called them that in my life. Or you can get a monthly subscription. Or three monthly, or six monthly, or 12 monthly. And then get your steady stream of Steam. Your Steam stream. Regardless if it's a subscription or an old one-off, you can get 20% off if you go to kiwico.com slash wheezywaiter or you use the promo code wheezy. Wheezy. That's wheezy with an H. The H stands for, heck yeah, that's a deal. Also something very cool, KiwiCo has created a resource hub for this time of uncertainty and school closures. KiwiCo.com slash kids hyphen at hyphen home, which is updated daily with helpful content for parents teaching kids at home. Thank you, KiwiCo. That is all. Thank you for watching this video. Now you can get back to your possibly good for you video games. YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Here's my previous video featuring three things that I did to achieve my dreams. You can support me on Patreon where I do a week daily vlog and I do a monthly live stream and a monthly minute long banjo face. Do you know what a banjo face is? This. I do that for a minute on Patreon once a month and it's, it's something. Subscribe, like, comment.